I know what you're thinking. Oh yeah, here's another journalist trying to make electric cars look crap by driving a long distance on a motorway, a journey that no one would really do. Um, well, you couldn't be further than the truth. People will use motorways in electric cars. They won't push the car too far, I know that. I'm gonna push this as far as it will go. Not because I wanna make, make electric cars look stupid or useless on long distance trips. Uh, we know that Teslas can do really well, for example. Um, but I wanna know how far this car will go. This is a Renault Zoe um, ZE40 R90. I've had it on test since October. I think it's a great car, it looks great, drives well. Um, I drive it into London every day. I'm not polluting at all. Um, and it's saving me a fortune in fuel. Uh, it's all good, I'm not gonna rubbish this car. I think it's lovely. Um, I also think electric cars are great. Um, and uh, so I've got nothing against them. But what I wanna know is how far this car will go. Easy way to do it safely without causing any trouble and running out of battery and making it look stupid uh, is m25 because i know that there is some ecotricity electric highway uh, rapid chargers there's also polar network rapid chargers um, basically i can pull in at regular intervals and make sure that i'm not uh, running out of juice and stranded um, so i will do that if, if necessary but the m25 is 117 miles all the way around um, this car is rated NEDC, uh, New Euro European Drive Cycle, which is the official test, uh, 250 miles. It doesn't, do like, doesn't do that in the real world. It does about 186 miles, which Renault freely admits. Renault is incredibly honest about the real world range, and it says that at 69 miles an hour, this Zoe will manage around 123 miles, making a full circuit of the M25 the perfect challenge. Aside from the fact that this is just a claim, that range is at 10 degrees C. At lower temperatures, range decreases. It is winter at the moment. It's uh, three degrees, four degrees today, so it's, it's not exactly temperate conditions, as they call it. Uh, but um, it should, you know, I'm hoping it'll do uh, 100 and, 117 miles. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but I just want to see how far this car will go. Um, I've taken a bit of a fair chance, I've pumped up the tyres, made sure they're at the correct temperatures, I've taken the child seats out, make sure there's not extra weight. Um, I'll drive it uh, at 70 miles an hour, a steady 70, and uh, I will also record the whole thing all the way. Um, I'm gonna, you can't put it in eco mode, there's an eco mode and there's a normal driving mode. You can't put it in eco because it limits the speed to 60 miles an hour. So I'll be in normal mode, but what I'll do is I'll switch off uh, the air conditioning, I don't need it. I'll have the heating on. Um, I won't have the stereo on uh, because I want to see how far it'll go. Um, it'll be an interesting experiment. Let's see what it does. Now I'm at Cobham Services uh, because they've got ecotricity points here. I'm just getting a final top up. Um, it's at 99% at the moment. Uh, hopefully it'll get to 100% exactly. Uh, I'm going to reset the trip is my B trip. There we are. Um, I'm also going to just reset. So that's reset as well. So we should get a good readout of exactly the sort of energy that has been used during the trip. So here we go. Um, Fully charged, about to leave Cobham Services. Uh, it's saying 159 miles at the moment, uh, range. That obviously changes depending on how you drive. So, just check the AC is off. It's on 20 degrees. Should be all right. Now at this point I was going to speed up the footage to show you all that it was filmed in one take on a single day and there's no sort of tomfoolery going on um, and it's a genuine result. But even at a thousand times the standard speed uh, it was too, too long. I mean the journey was over two hours long so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut to a few key moments in the journey. Uh, every 10 miles I would do an update. Um, now, if you're the sort of person who loves conspiracy theories and you really want to see the full video, 
Uh, you can tweet us at st underscore driving, but I'm going to spare the rest of you. Will it make it all the way around? Ladies and gents, place your bets. Okay, we're exactly 10 miles into the journey and we started with what, 150 miles or so, 144 miles or so showing on the uh, range. It's down to 124 already, so it has it's dropped by 20 miles over the last 10 miles. That's expected because we're going faster than uh, this car would normally like to go. But uh, I'm hoping that will sort of steady off a bit now. I've got 123 miles saying I need to go, which is technically plenty. Uh, one of the things that I'm up against, or the Zoe is up against, is uh, the wind. Aside from the cold, and it is currently six degrees, so a little bit better than it was when we when I first set off this morning. Um, but one of the things that's up against, apart from that, is wind. Uh, there's quite a lot of crosswinds, um, and that's obviously either going to hinder or help it at various points along this journey. Okay, here's the 30 mile lowdown. Uh, average consumption 3.0, average speed 58.4, and uh, that hasn't crept up as much as it possibly could have done because there's a big 50 mile, mile an hour stretch uh, between the M40 turnoff and Rickmansworth um, and I'm seeing on those signs uh, that there is there are long delays on the M25 around junction 27 28 uh, which won't be good news for my test okay we're around St Albans and uh, 40 miles down the stats 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, 93 miles to go according to the range, average speed of 60.2 now, and total consumption 12 kilowatt hours. Um, 92 miles to go, and I've done I've done 40.4. I'm quietly confident now, um, but anything could happen. There's that traffic up ahead, which to be honest actually would help me rather than hinder me. But who knows what's going to happen? Sometimes, with uh, you know, if you've got an electrical device like a mobile phone or something, you can find that the battery can suddenly drop off a cliff as it gets lower in energy. So, if that's a genuine readout, I'm saying 90 miles to go now, then that's good, but I can't rely on that. We're coming up to 60 miles, so we're over halfway now and just joining the back of the queue uh, that was advertised on the gantries. And uh, yeah, this looks pretty serious. Um, it was brought us down to 60, then 50, then 40 miles an hour, and now we're just in a tailback, so there we go. But we're at 60 miles mark, so uh, I can tell you that. Got an indicated 78 miles of range left, 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour is my average consumption. Uh, I've been averaging 60.6 miles an hour. Uh, total consumption is 17 kilowatt hours. And uh, yeah, so looking good, but this is um, going to throw all the measurements out. Oh, that was a jam and a half. I seem to be past the worst of it now. I'm at the junction of the A12, but that's that was right from uh, junction 27 to junction 28. Apparently it's a vehicle fire. I haven't got to it yet, but uh, I hope everyone's all right. There's some trucks stopped by the side of the road. Um, uh, here we go. But... Uh, Basically, that's money in the bank for me because I have an indicated 75 miles range left and I think it was 77 when I joined that queue. And here's the police. 
Oh yeah, a truck fully burnt out there. Wow. Uh, and off we go, back up to 70 miles an hour, but uh, I've done 65 miles and I've got 75 miles to go, so I've, pro I've done about five miles uh, and I've probably gained a few miles there actually in terms of range. So it's the sort of thing you would encounter normally, I guess, so just a real world driving test. There we go, 70 miles done. Uh, status update, I've got 70 miles left to go. If you think about that, that means I've got 140 miles of range on, at motorway speeds. It's pretty good. I mean, it's no 300 mile diesel, is it? 400 miles. Uh, but, but 140 miles is probably better than a lot of people expect from a, a little super mini electric car like this. Here we are crossing over the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge at Dartford, the Dartford Crossing, and you know what? When the M25, the M25 can be a nightmare. It can be a nightmare, and as it has proven. But when it's clear like this, you're going over the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge, which is a stunning bit of architecture. It's actually quite a nice run. I'm enjoying this. And one of the things that I realised when um, I was in that queue was electric cars, I mean, they're basically automatics. It's, it's even smoother than automatic because there's no gears to change. Uh, so you cruise along, you don't have to worry about playing around with a gearbox or anything like that, pressing the clutch. Left leg, nice and relaxed. No noise from the engine. It's quite calming, actually. We just passed the 100 miles mark, um, and we've got to indicate it. 29 miles left, so not 140. Um, don't know what's happened, but uh, it may have been just uh, slightly optimistic based on the fact that we were in that queue for so long, but uh, we're looking at just under 130 miles at this sort of pace. This really is the uh, last stretch now. I'm just passing the M23 turn off, junction 7, towards Brighton and Gatwick. Uh, and really, I'm within spitting distance of Cobham. So, it's all looking good. However, I have to say, when you're driving on the motorway at this sort of speed and you are seeing the, uh, the range just tick down, you start to just, you can't help but think, you know, at this point you're starting to think, where am I going to stop? According to the signs, I am about one mile away from Cobham Services, having done 114 and a half miles. Uh, so, nearly 117 miles around according to the Zoe. Um, I've got 16 miles of range left and I'm wondering at what point the Zoe says, starts to have a bit of a panic, uh, as in, you better put in soon because we're running out of energy. Um, generally electric cars start to beep at you. The sat, the sat nav will try and find you the nearest charging point. Uh, eventually it will go into, I know the Zoe, uh, sorry, the, the, the Nissan Leaf sort of goes into a turtle mode, so it starts crawling, and eventually it will stop. Um, and that's to preserve the integrity of the battery. It doesn't want you to run out completely, and there'll always be a sort of residual charge left in it. Here we are, copper services. Um, but it will stop, and then you have to be rescued. But if you've got to that point, you've not done your homework or your planning. Here we are, back at Cobham Services, 116 miles round, according to the Zoe, and I have 15 miles left. Well done, Zoe. Very, very proud of you. You wouldn't be able to do this even three years ago. Um, 
the original Zoe had a range of about 100, and 100 miles realistically. Uh, so you wouldn't be able to do it. Things have come on quite a long way in a very short period of time. In the future, on this evidence, is bright because until you can start doing long journeys in electric cars, they're really just one of two cars for your household, realistically. You could always hire a car to go on a long distance journey, but you want your car to do everything really, don't you? And here we are, back at the charging point. And we have done uh, 116.4 miles, average consumption 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, average speed 46.2 miles an hour, total consumption 35 kilowatt hours. And we did it, we've got 16 miles of range left. And I need the loo. So what have we learned? Well, I've learned that the Zoe can go around the M25 in one charge, which is pretty good to know. Uh, 120 miles uh, is easily achievable at motorway speeds, and then you're gonna have to start looking for charging. I think we know that we need to go and, if we're gonna go on the motorway, we need to plan the route. Pretty, pretty important. Um, we also know that there's rapid charging, if you need it, to keep you going. It's probably not the best way to go on a long distance trip. It's not, still not incredibly convenient, but this has been a really interesting experiment and I'm full of confidence now that I can head out onto the motorway for a good chunk and not have to worry.